truly live in Muhammad is the Prophet. We give thanks for all of the angels, the prophets, the divine ones, the ancestors, our mothers, our fathers, all of the great ones that have come as manifestations of that great and divine light, Allah. And we speak that presence forward right now in this circle with the greeting words of peace, assalamu alaikum. Certainly we thank the great ancient ones for preserving this wisdom in this murid line that we have with Sheikh Ahmed Dubamba, Sheikh Abbafal, Serene Falu, Serene Salihu, and certainly for our beloved Sheikh, Sheikh Sufi Ba, who has crisscrossed the Atlantic Ocean many times so that we can have this wisdom that we're basking in now. So we give thanks to him for all of his work and for all that he's bringing forth. I just want to call your attention for a few moments and talk on the topic of an introduction to the science of numbers and stars. How many people have heard of numerology? How many people have heard of astrology? Who can tell me what numerology is? Good answer. Anybody else? Okay. Yes. Breathing back and forth. And I'm like, so what's on the answer about it? Is that, um, is that that's when I learned to actually just use my birth name. You know, like, a lot of people change that name many times in school. But right. But your birth name is your birth name. Regardless if it's James, Tess, whatever, you know. But, and so that's why I was like, okay, no. You know, it is, it is my name. So that was given. Regardless of the culture or anything like that. Because that all I was doing. Great answer. Anybody else? Yes. So pretty much every letter is equal or every letter is equal to a certain number and when you put that letter together with certain number, it's like ooh, like it, it, it kinda gets like sort of how Brother Wally was speaking on words of power versus words of meaning. Like you take those and words of power in order to make, you know, something with meaning. Very true. Yes, sister. Oh, awesome. Very true. So what about astrology? Who knows anything about astrology? Yes. <laughs> Okay, well, we're just keeping it real simple talking about definitions right now. And so with numerology and astrology, anytime you hear ology after a word, there you go. It means the study of, the knowledge of, the science of. So numerology is the study of, the science of, the knowledge of numbers. Astrology is the study, the knowledge of, and the science of the stars, the heavenly lights, or the newer is another word for it. So, astrology and numerology are two of our ancient sciences from way back when, when we were our ancestors. Now is the time we have to begin to bring these sciences back to the forefront. We just had that conversation, myself and the sister in the back here, about how important this time is now because a lot of our sciences are being lost, they're being redefined, and they're being reclassified. And it's up to us who are the original timekeepers 
and the original knowledge holders to bring that information back forward. So that's what we want to talk about with astrology and numerology. We hear these terms, but astrology and numerology have been turned into something different these days, whereby a lot of people don't want to really deal with it. Because we hear that it's haram, it's shirk, it's against the Bible, etc. But looking at both of those words, particularly numerology, we oftentimes miss the science that's actually in the word. Does anybody know what a number is? Can anybody tell me what a number is? Real simple stuff that a lot of times we don't think about. What's a number? A value. Value, okay. Anybody else? Like a recording point or like a, a tracker? Tracker? Good answer. Anybody else? Those are great answers. Another answer, very simply, is a number is a symbol. Is is a symbol. The meaning that's attached to that symbol is determined by the person who is defining what that symbol means. So when you see one, somebody has already determined that that means the whole. That means the one God. Two, that little squiggly line. And these symbols are very similar throughout different cultures. Every culture has a number and alphabet system where each letter is corresponded by a number. Every system has that. So with that system being as ancient as it is, that means that there's meaning in that. The key is we don't have to accept anybody else's meaning of what that symbol is supposed to represent. Yeah. We can assign our own meaning to it. For example, when I put up the one, what does that mean? Mm. It means Islam, one God. If I'm in the church and I put up that one, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. That means I'm going to the bathroom, yep. excuse me. <laughs> Come on, y'all was in church. <laughs> they get up and put the one up. When LeBron James is running down the court and he put up the one, what that mean? Nobody know? No, that means put that ball up by the rim and I'm going to get it in the alley <laughs> One has different meanings based on the person that's defining the term. So that's what I want to leave you with in terms of numerology and the importance of being able to define what these terms mean. It's the same with astrology. Stars mean light. There's a saying that there are more stars in the sky than there are grains of sand on all the beaches in the world. Now that's mind blowing. If you can just get a cup of sand and imagine how many grains is in that cup, then you think about all the beaches of the world and you're going down about at least three feet. That's a lot of stars, but it's a lot of light and it's telling us and it's reflective of the light that's in us. So when we see the stars in the sky, it's telling us a story. And the constellations actually channel energy. So speaking in terms of astrology, a good way to remember it is the planets and the sun, they're, they're the ones that control or hold a certain amount of energy. Your astrological sign is where that energy is focused into. And then when you make an astrological chart, the house in which that sign is in is going to determine how that's going to impact your life. Based on the heavenly bodies and the stars and the numbers are the same. Now, we don't want to take the science and just use it for the lottery. <laughs> Unless we win. <laughs> I'm <doing it. laughs> but the science, 
the science of astrology and numerology is more based on the Sufi path, which is inward work. The numbers of the divine attributes have meanings. Say, for example, in the Abjad, there's an attribute for Al Muji. I am in the Al Muji phase of my life. Now, we wouldn't know what that means mm. unless we know what Al Muji adds up to. <laughs> and I know you Sufi scholars know what Al Muji adds up to. Who can tell me? Of course. Double nipples, exactly. So it's the science of numbers that have a meaning in everything. The numbers that are on your house have a meaning. Your social security numbers, they add up to something. They have a meaning. The number on your license plate. You can speak a whole language of Morse code, which is just using, or uh, binary code is using zeros and ones. Morse code uses taps, but they're numbered. So everything has a number. The word says every number on every hair on our head is numbered. So numbers are important, which means that we are important and the light that we contain is important. So I just want to go through a quick few notes so that I don't miss anything and I don't want to take too much time because I know that we are full and we have a lot that we got to get through. The first thing is the one to nine, the mathematical system of one to nine. There's nine numbers. I didn't mention the zero because the zero represents the void from which everything comes into existence. Everything comes into existence from the nothingness. From the nothingness you get the absolute and that starts with the one. And it goes spirals up to the nine, which is a number of completion. But as quiet as it's kept, every number is a number of completion. There's no one number that's better than any other number. Every number is complete. One is wholeness. Two represents the, both extremes. And everything is contained in the extremes. Three is the, tr the trinity, Brahma, Shiva, Vishnu. And on and on and on. Four is foundation, the square, or the circle. A circle is just a square with edges. Or a square is a circle with edges. Same concept. So every number is complete in itself. What we want to do is make sure whatever numbers that we have in our astrological chart, whatever day we was born on, whatever age we are, we want to make sure that we're using the full vibration of that number. So how do we know what vibration a number carries. Well, the ancients designed this system years ago and told us what each one of these numbers mean. And very simply, I'm gonna go through what some of these numbers mean. And we don't need more than one word because if we get more than a couple of words, then we start putting our own definition on it as opposed to just giving a context so that you can put your own words around that word and it has meaning for you so one we already know means completeness one means the beginning two represents balance it also represents extremes three represents communication creativity four represents structure foundation formation five represents movement and travel. Six represents harmony. It also represents service. Six is a kitten number. Seven represents spirituality, analytical ability, mysticism. One of the most sacred numbers in the Egyptian culture. Eight represents infinity. It represents death but it also represents higher business in terms of business building. And of course nine is more of a universal number 
representing the completion of the one through nine before the numbers began to repeat. Hmm. Does anybody have any questions on that? Don't ask me to say it again. Since we're here, got Yes, sir. Nope. Well, yeah, one thing, you said six was service, and what was before service? Service and health. Health, health and deal. Anyone else? Yes, sir. Are you added to school? I'm sorry? Are you added to school? How do I add up? I didn't hear the last part. The story. The story. The add up the story, okay. That's a great question. Your story is comprised of words. And words is comprised of letters. Sheikh Sufi teaches us that the letters represent the body. And when you turn those letters into numbers, that represents the soul. When you times the soul by the soul, then you get the spirit. <laughs> I have amazing teacher. <laughs> but to answer your question, that's how you add up your story and become the living embodiment of whatever that number is that you end up coming up with through that mathematics. In the nation of Islam, we were taught that if you don't speak the language correctly, you will not be successful. Speaking the language correctly means using the right words. Using the right words also means using the right numbers. Because every letter that make up the word has a number. So the numbers are the key to the words. That's the soul of it. Everybody got that? We keep it a real simple and basic. Okay. Have you ever heard somebody say, I got your number? <laughs> Some of y'all not old school. <laughs> but that's what we used to say back in the day, I got your number. What that basically means is I have an understanding of you. A lot of times we don't know what these terms mean but they have meaning behind what we think they mean. Who ever heard of the group Earth, Wind, and Fire? Okay. All right. So y'all know who Maurice White is, right? Yes. Okay. How did they get the name Earth, Wind, and Fire? Element? Zodiac? Any other answers? No, <laughs> Great answer. <laughs> Earth, Wind, and Fire. Actually, one of the teachers that I was under, he was actually an advisor to Earth, Wind, and Fire. Maurice White. Earth, Wind, and Fire is based on Maurice White, Zodiac sign. Maurice White does not have any water signs, any, water, any planets in water in his chart. So he only have planets in earth signs, winds or air signs, and fire signs. That's why the name is Earth, Wind, and Fire, because he don't have any water in his chart. Astrology. People talk about how astrology is haram or is evil. Every Bible, Quran, holy book, is based on numerology and astrology. Bar none. Every last book is based on the system of astrology and numerology. Astrology and astronomy was once the same science. Then they broke off because those who were dealing with astronomy just wanted to deal with calculations, and they call astrology a pseudoscience. Pseudo means false. So 
someone takes our ancient wisdom that was compiled over centuries and thousands upon thousands of years and then classify it as a pseudoscience because they don't have the mental intellect to understand it. And we agree with it. <laughs> Do we understand how astrology and numerology was comprised? Simply, years upon years of observing the stars and the movement of the stars, noticing that impact on human beings and on world events, writing that down, passing that down generation after generation after generation, each generation keeping up that same process until you have a whole book where later on down the line, we can say, based on this and this, this is what's happening. Based on your moon being in Taurus, that means you're gonna have some money. Based on your Venus being in the second house, that means you're gonna have wealth. It's not a pseudoscience, this is scientific. It is science and the basic of all science because you can't have any science without the science of numerology and astrology. Taking it a step further, who knows when Ramadan begins and ends? What is this based on? Based on the moon. It's based on the phases of the moon, which is astronomy. Who knows how Easter is calculated? You sorry? Yes, how East is calculated. Close. In order for it to be Easter, first you have to have Easter. <laughs> yeah, Easter. Uh -huh. But Easter to be calculated, first you gotta have the spring equinox. Can't have Easter before the spring equinox. Then after the spring equinox, you have to have a full moon. What's different times of the year. Okay. It's just different times of the year. Based on the apparent spin of the earth. Some people believe it's a flat plane. Some people believe that we're spinning. Regardless, the concept is still the same. It's based on, you know, the different seasons. But that's how they calculate Easter. It's based on the equinox, the moon cycle, and then the Sunday after that moon cycle is when your Easter is every year. That's why it's not the same Sunday every year. Based on astrology, astronomy, and numerology. And they tell us it's wrong. And they tell us it's wrong, exactly. <laughs> While they're using these sciences to rule us. That's the part they don't tell you and they can't tell you. Same with the Quran. Yes, this. Yeah, the crescent part of the moon. It's like a little slither of the moon. Right. It's a star. Right. That marks, quote unquote, the beginning of that period. Any other questions? Okay, the last thing I want to cover, I wish I had something where I can play, but many of us come from the Christian church. And how many people have ever heard the song 12 gates to the city. Mm -hmm. Not many, huh? Mm -hmm. Anyway, in that song, oh no, we're not doing that. <laughs> we're not doing that. <laughs> but the song talks about, have you heard of the city where the streets are paved with gold? And then it goes on to talk about there's three gates in the east, three gates in the north, Three gates in the south and three gates in the west. In the church song? In the church song. <laughs> Twelve gates to the city. Twenty-four elders in the city. 
48 angels in the city. In the church song. When I looked up the song, because we sang it for years, you can't find an author. No one knows who wrote the song. But all of these churches sing this song over and over. That is an astrological, astronomical song. When it's talking about the gates, and I'm going to close on this point because I know we got many more presentations. When it's talking about the 12 gates, that has many different meanings. The 12 sign of the zodiac is one. In the nation of Islam, we call that the 12 sciences, or the 12 major sciences. 24 elders out of 24 angels represents the 24 sciences, but it also represents the 24 hours in a day. 48 angels, 24 times two gives you 48. But on a deeper level, when it's talking about a city where the streets are paved with gold, it's actually talking about the body. It's talking about the alchemical process of turning our bodies into gold. This is what Sheikh teaches all the time. That's what the song is actually talking about. The 12 gates represents what was talking about. We have 24 chromosomes. We had, we had 24 chromosomes, 24 pairs of chromosomes, which gives you 48 in total. So it's talking about the process of illuminating and connecting these chromosomes so that our bodies shine forth as pure gold, which means we become pure light and reflect the Nur of Muhammad. That's what this city of gold is talking about. It's talking about this body and this vessel becoming actual gold, actual light, something of real value and substance. In a church song. Mm -hmm. You know, the reason they can't find the author of that song is because the Africans who came here, we sang that song as slaves. Mm -hmm. Wisdom. That's wisdom. That's wisdom. <laughs> the other part to that, when it talks about 12, the 12 gates to the city, in Revelations it talks about 12 gates to the city of Jerusalem. Who knows what Jerusalem means? Founded in peace. Founded in Islam. So these 12 gates, these 12 signs that are in our physical vessel or that are moving through our vessel, once we align those and once we harmonize those, then we have interest into a state of peace. And we reflect that peace, which is called Islam. That is the true meaning of Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Something else that's talked about in the church, but they don't really give the meaning of. All of this is astrology, numerology, and our sciences. Any questions? Yes. When I was in church, we usually refer to heaven. And then when he was talking about the slaves, when they wanted to escape, of course, they always used the star, the North Star, and their point. So I could see clearly what he just said. Because the children, you would have to have them escape as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, no. The space within that needs to be in harmony, so that one can ascend to these golden states or these golden states. Yes, sir. What do those represent? Well, it represents one representation of it is the twelve signs of the zodiac. Another representation is. Once we had 12 heavenly bodies, now we have nine. Once it is said that we had 12 chakras, 
now we have seven, some say nine with two above the head, etc. But it represents balancing and aligning all of that energy within us so that we can become that pure gold through this alchemical process. That's what it's speaking to. Yes, Yes. Different calendar systems. The Egyptians had a 10 month calendar. The Greeks had a 10 month and then they added um, June and July, for, no, July and August, the Julius Caesar and Augustus Caesar. But before that was a 10 month calendar, which is why when you get to uh, September, Sept means seven. Oct for October means eight. Novi means nine and ten deci for December means ten. But it's the twelfth month because of those two months that was thrown in there which threw the calendar system off. But yeah, you're right. There is a correlation between the calendar and these twelve. Yes, sister. If you need more, Noble Drew Ali said, the best study is the study of self and knowledge of self. So the more would be learning more about you, more about the numbers that are connected to you, and more about the astrological influences that are affecting you. Now let me make this point clear though. We are all of the numbers, not just one. We're all the numbers. We're all the zodiac signs, and we reflect all of the energy of the planets. However, based on the time that we came into this cycle, there are certain imprints that we have based on the time that we arrived. And that stick with us throughout our whole life. The key is to master that energy so that we can begin to balance that out with all of the other signs. It's like the teaching of Ayurveda, which is an East Indian healing system that I use. It was compiled in East India, but it was compiled based on the information from all over the world. India is just where it was contained, but it's all ancient wisdom. It's the same way with all the numbers and all of the signs that would have you. All of that information is compiled within us. What we have to do now is just begin to balance those things. In Ayurveda, if you're out of balance, then you have to eat or drink or some type of um, lifestyle regimen so that you can bring the other two into balance with the one that's out of balance. And then just like with astrology and numerology, if you're seeing the, the bad effects of one number, one sign, you can balance that out with another sign and with understanding that sign. In Islam, with the mantra system, the thicker system that we have, that's used to offset energy. It's used to protect us. It's used to bring things into our existence, push things away from us. That's the same way we use numerology and astrology. Certain numbers and certain astrological signs and planets at times bring forth adverse effects. So there are certain things that you can say, certain mantras that you can say that balance out that energy of a sign or a number, just like in the Sufi system. It's all the same system. These are all our ancient teachings and our ancient practices that have been broken up and splintered off into different groups well, this person called himself a Hindu, this person's a Buddhist, this person's a Christian, this person's an atheist. It's all the same wisdom, it's just in different places. Now, just like the story of Osiris, who was cut into 14 pieces, the divine feminine has to come now and bring these pieces back together 
so that we can represent the whole, which is the Rahman energy. That's the divine feminine. In Egypt, we call that our set, which is Isis. Is, is. You break that down numerologically, that's I am that I am, but numerologically, is, is, is one, 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 one. Eleven, eleven. <laughs> this is our energy. Is, is meaning I am, or I am that I am. These are all concepts that we just haven't grasped. One last thing. Speaking of that 11, 11 is powerful. Master Farah Muhammad in the nation of Islam. <laughs> when Master Farah Muhammad came, in the lessons he said, I came to North America by myself. Interestingly enough, when you do the numerology for the word for rod, you come up with a two, one and one equals two, which is an 11. A lot of times the two is a disguised 11. Muhammad in the abjad is a 92. Nine and two is an 11. So when Master Farah Muhammad said, I came to North America by myself, he's one. What would represent by myself? Numerologically. The number 11. One and one. If I'm the one and there's another one, I'm by myself. I'm by myself. That is the energy. That's the power energy that we're living in right now. <laughs> the power of the 11. By myself. So our responsibility is to become masters through this Sufi system. Any master number that you get after 11 is based on 11. You can't get the 22, 33, 44 without the number 11. So it's all based on the 11. That's the master building number. 11 is who? 11 is who? Alhamdulillah. Any other questions? Yes, sister. Is there um, any esoteric meaning to 13? And I'm going to explain a little more. You, uh, you said there's 12 gates or something that lead to the city of gold. And I remember, like, that just made me think so when Nobu Ali said there's 12 steps and a ladder or something, but on the 13th step is when you ascend. But then if you go through the 12 gates, it's like. You know, in order to get like, what's the like, what is thirteen some type of like esoteric like? Mm -hmm. that, that's just what. Oh, um, great question. Yeah, question. Oh. Thirteen is not an unlucky number. Yeah. It's, it's a power number. Yeah. Here's the reason. Jesus had twelve disciples, right? Yeah. Actually, he had thirteen. Yeah. He fired one and then replaced it. But <laughs> the key is you always got to have that 12. That's the point. He represents the 13. Yeah. So just like with astrology, and just like we're talking about with all of the numbers, it's the 12, and then once you gain the energy or the mastery of the 12, you become the 13th. The 13th tribe is actually the 12 combined in the one. That's the number 13. That's why they don't want us messing with the number 13. <laughs> yes, absolutely. I didn't hear that last point. Yes. You're not wide awake until you gain mastery of the 12. Once you gain mastery of the 12, then you got that newer and you're awake. Because with the light, the newer, you're able to see. That's the key. It's the death card.
It is a death that takes place because you have to die to the physical world. You got to die to the ego. You have to die to your association with one or two signs. You get to a point where you have to die to that whole structure in order to be something different. That's the death. The Tarot system is based on the Kabbalah system. And the Kabbalah system is what they call Jewish mysticism, but it's so much more than that. Mm -hmm. The Kabbalah system is the Ka and the Ba of Allah. It's basically the Ka and the Ba of Allah in physical vessel, which they call Adam Cotton, but it's talking about the physical body that is perfected through those 10 sephirah and achieving the light and the balance of that light through those 10 sephirah in the Kabbalah. I don't want to go too far into that, but basically it's talking about aligning that light so that you're connected with that light source. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. All this means is being quiet. He slipped up. He slipped up. And where was it? Where was the talking to him up before he? Atlanta. He slipped up and came to Atlanta and I heard him talking to somebody. And he said, I know a little something about him around the restaurant. I said, huh? I said, can you come to making and give a presentation on that? He said, yeah, I think so. I think so. I thank you for the opportunity, Jay. Yeah, to you. sit before us. Yes, ma'am. When will you be teaching this class? <laughs> That's my next question. <laughs> 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 How many people would take an eight-week class on that? Man. I think everybody in here would take it. Yeah. Could you yeah. put this? Astrology and numerology in the eight week class for the super school? By law's grace, yes, sir. All of the above. All of the above. Because all those systems have meaning. And so our job, you know, once you become master, we have to go into them and see what the Jews are, mm. get the Jews, mm. and utilize them. Mm. Brother Musa is brilliant at that. <laughs> but that's what the systems are for, because this is all stuff that we originated many, many years ago. And we're here now so that we can reclaim it, so that it's not destroyed forever. I'm gonna end there. Thanks so much for listening. I'll see you next time. Thank you, dude. Thank you, dude. Thank you, dude. Thank you, dude. Thank you, dude.